and I experienced this mystery at that moment that that this like absence of a body, this emptiness of the tomb was filled with the presence of a life, the presence of a love, the presence of the risen Lord. Christ has risen. <laughs> He's not here. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord give you his peace. Father Malachi coming to you here again from Matagarpa, Nicaragua. All I've got to say is what I said before in the other video about the Shroud of Turin. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's time to sing it. It's time to say it. It's time to proclaim that Jesus Christ has risen. And, you know, if you were at the Easter Vigil, you heard that first proclamation of the Alleluia before the Gospel. You heard as well when the deacon or the priest was saying farewell at the end. It's not just go in peace. It's go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. And it's this Alleluia that's crying out from the heart of the church in light of this mystery of the resurrection that we're just continuing to dive further into. And in the readings, what we hear in this first week after Easter, in these days where we're reflecting on the mystery of what has happened, we find these instances of people going to the tomb. And the first are the women. The women are there, they're at the, they're at the cross. They're the first ones there at the tomb. They're the ones who can't stay away from Christ. The ones who are desiring to be with them even in the grave. And so they go with the spices, they want to anoint the body, they go with tears, they go with hearts that are laden looking for Jesus. And when they show up, guess what? He's not there. They show up and guess what? The stone has been rolled away. Guess what? There's no guards to be seen because they fled in fear. Guess what? Inside it's empty, except for this cloth on the floor and the, the head cloth that was wrapped up and set to the side. And Mary Magdalene going in, runs out and goes and gets Peter and John and the other disciples and they come to see what's happened as well. Everybody's coming to this tomb, running to this tomb. And interestingly, Mary Magdalene, the other women, when they encounter the angels who appear to them there at the tomb, they, they say, hey, where have you put him? What's going on? Tell me where he is. And the angels just look kind of perplexed. They're like, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. Since the, the first proclamation of the gospel to the day that we live in at this moment, 2022, Brothers and sisters, we've been proclaiming the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And the empty tomb has been one of the signs, one of the sort of pieces of evidence, if you will, of the reality of the resurrection, that it's not just a nice story, and that it's not just another myth, but an event that occurred in real history, real time. And in this mystery, the empty tomb is something that actually, even to this day, people are going. People go on pilgrimage. And in fact, a few years ago, I had the blessing as a, as a seminarian to go on pilgrimage. And while I was there in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, in this city where Jesus himself went through the passion, went through his death and resurrection, I had the joy of getting to spend a night in a church known as the Holy Sepulchre. If you ever get a chance to go, I don't know exactly how it happened. Somebody else signed me up, but I think there's a way you can sign up. But I definitely recommend doing this deal where basically it's like a lock-in, but it's a lock-in in the Holy Sepulchre. That is the church where Calvary is located, the very place where Jesus died, and the tomb, the tomb where Christ was laid. And the tomb that the women went to, the tomb that Peter and John ran to, the tomb that was empty. And I went there, um, I mean, I was a seminarian, but at that time in my life in particular, is just like struggling and in a difficult place. There are some difficulties and, and family stuff going on and my own just mess. You know, sometimes like life is just like, ah! So interiorly, I was, I was struggling and I was going there and I was just carrying in my heart all of these different sort of intentions and concerns, all these things that were weighing on me. And I remember going in there and what you do is you go in, right? and everybody's there, the place is filled during the day of pilgrims. It's just like a sea of bodies and a line that wraps around to be able to get 45 seconds, maybe at the tomb, going in, kneeling down, praying in front of the stone where the body of Christ was laid. And at night, everybody's kicked out, except for the folks that are able to spend the night there doing this vigil. And you get locked in, I think it's like seven, seven or 8 p.m. And then they don't open up again until 4 a.m. 
And what they do is they actually pass a ladder out through a window. So like you're locked in, like there's no going anywhere. And you have this night to be there and maybe 20 people, 30 maximum. And so there's a gift of being able to have like a lot of time just to pray and be there. And so as soon as they shut that door, I haul tailed it right to the tomb. Cause I'm like, that's where I want to be. I want to go there, Lord. I want to go there and be with you. And I remember going in and I remember kneeling down. You have to kind of like crouch through these small doors to go through a first entrance and there's kind of like a mini chapel and then you go through another even smaller door and you're on your knees and I'm kind of like a big dude and so I'm like kneeling there praying in front of the very place where the body of Jesus is laid. I just remember being there and I remember I just at one point literally just laid prostrate on top of the stone. And I just began to weep as I was thinking of all the people I love, thinking of all of the just struggles in their lives and people who've asked my prayers and my own struggles, pouring it out and just in tears and tears and just asking Jesus, like, please, like, help, like, show up, like, do something. Be there, be in these people's lives, be in my life at this moment. And I remember I just poured it all out and then there was like a, a pause. It was this, this moment where it was like, okay, like, you know, I, when somebody's like talking and they finally get to the end and they sort of stop and like, okay, I got it out, you know? So like the pouring out of my heart. And then the only thing I could feel and the only thing that I could hear was my own heartbeat. And I remember feeling the cold stone and the pressure almost like echoing back to me, my heart beating on that stone. And I just realized at that moment that at one point there was a heart that was on that stone that wasn't beating. It was as cold as the very stone that I was laying on. And then in a mystery, in a miracle, in this marvelous moment of love revealing its full power, that heart started to beat again. That heart that had been pierced on the cross. And that heart broke out with like this power that was explosive. It says there's like an earthquake, you know, the stone is moved away by force. Light comes shattering out from the darkness. Not as if somebody's shining a light into it, but out from. And there as I was laying on that slab and just praying with this, I just heard the Lord said, okay, I hear you. Will you be with me now? Will you be with me now? I just laid there and I don't know how long, but all of a sudden, this place, this literally, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's literally like a cave that they built around it and you're inside and there's nothing else there except this piece of stone. And all of a sudden I became so profoundly aware of the presence of him, the presence of Jesus Christ and I experienced this mystery at that moment that that this like absence of a body, this emptiness of the tomb was filled with the presence of a life, the presence of a love, the presence of the risen Lord. And in fact, written in Greek above the, of the tomb there, it says, Christ has risen. <laughs> He's not here. And those angels tell the women when they come to the tomb, He is risen. That's why he's not here. He has risen from the grave. That's why the church sings Alleluia. And that empty tomb, which we know where it's at, thank God, you know, the enemies of the church are really good. The Romans built a temple over top of the very spot where Jesus had died and been buried and rose because they wanted to sort of desecrate a holy site for the Christians. Thank you, Romans, because that created an archaeological footprint. Bam! So we can know where it's at with certainty. And this place is still there this day radiating out this life that broke forth from the grave, broke forth from the tomb, broke forth from the darkness of death, showing us that there's a love and there's a power that's greater than even death. And that's what we are celebrating. And that's what we're singing Alleluia about. So brothers and sisters, I invite you to continue to press into the mystery. And it is a mystery. But to know that the risen Lord desires an encounter with you. He wants you to experience His presence and so, you know, maybe in your prayer sometime this week, like take whatever is in your heart and in prayer, go to the tomb, bring it there, leave it there, pour it out there at that tomb that's empty and experience the fullness of the presence of the risen Lord. Because if you're looking for Jesus, he's not there in that tomb. No, he is risen. He is alive. 
and he has come for you, brothers and sisters. Keeping our eyes on him, we're making this journey home to heaven. Poco a poco un día vamos a llegar. God bless you. We'll see you next time.